and a full, full fruity aroma. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have a first of a new kind of Kentucky straight bourbons. It's called Double Oaked. It's from Woodford Reserve from the Labro and Graham Distillery, 43.2% ABV. And if you read the Bourbon Act carefully, then you notice that a Kentucky straight bourbon is only allowed to mature in a fresh American white oak cask. Well, critics say uh, this is written into the law to keep the lumber industry in work so that they have to constantly supply fresh American white oak. Others say, well, this is a quality assurance that you do not use too often used casks uh, for the maturation and there will be less and less uh, oak influence in a whiskey and whiskey is a brown spirit so there has to be an influence from the oak. If you look at the compounds a cask can give into a spirit maturing in that cask then you see uh, constantly or a progressively reducing amount of uh, color and aromas being transferred uh, into the whiskey and then this cask is shipped to Scotland and then it's going on uh, further and further less transfer and if you see an uh, a Scottish whiskey with five six or eight years of age then it's white wine it's quite clear and not that dark as this one is. So how to mature a Kentucky Straight Bourbon twice or in a second cask without uh, offending the Bourbon Act? Well, you take as a second cask again a new fresh American oak cask. Then you have uh, the transfer then you switch over to a new cask and have again the transfer. So in this double oaking process you have a massive transport of compounds, of taste, of aromas into the whiskey. Very, very intense. Um, if you look at the label you see two small cask symbols here and said select barrels aged a second time in charred American white oak barrel. Select barrels. Well, if we have all those new oak from the same cooperage, why, why select? Why not take any of those casks? Yeah, probably uh, the position of the cask in the warehouse. Well, that matters, really matters. Um, in charred American white oak barrels, a cask is processed that it first toast it, so heat it up to 150 degrees centigrade and then it's cooking and uh, this cellulosis is converted into wood sugars and those wood sugars are caramelized and this caramelized wood sugar brings the brown color and there are tastes of caramel and whatever uh, you can imagine produced during this toasting process and there is a, a boundary layer between the uh, processed and the unprocessed wood in the staves in the wall of the cask and this layer moves out the longer you toast and typically you stop in the middle uh, of the stave um, and then you you flame the cask from the inside and there you this results in a charcoal layer on the inside of the cask and uh, this charcoal layer is divided into at least four grades light uh, medium strong and very strong and there are those alligator charred cask where uh, the charcoal layer is very thick and uh, it breaks into small pieces looking like the skin of an alligator 
So, and here we have, uh, and, and this charcoal layer does two things. The first is it filters. A charcoal is an active filter. It filters sharp substances out of the whiskey, the raw whiskey. And then you have uh, the charcoal layer, well, close to the red layer between the unprocessed and processed wood. And in this, oh, the, the boundary between the charcoal and the processed wood for toasting, during toasting. And in this boundary between the charcoal and the uh, and the caramelized wood sugars, there a lot of compounds uh, are created during the flaming process. This gives a lot of aroma. Uh, I learned that last year, and before I thought it was only uh, the filtering of the charcoal, but no, uh, the intermediate uh, region between the charcoal and the processed wood, a lot of things happen there. Quite magic. Um, this exceptional bourbon has been crafted in a unique double barrel process. First matured in a custom crafted barrel and then re-barreled, so filled into another barrel, in a heavily toasted, heated up to 150 centigrade, lightly charred barrel. So the second barrel is only lightly charred but heavily processed during toasting. For finishing, it features a wide range of rich complex oak character. Uh, why only charring a little bit for the second time? Well, most of the substances, the sharper, the faints, uh, Woodford Reserve is produced on pot stills, not the typical column stills of American bourbon distillers. No, distilleries, no. They, these are produced in Scottish or imported uh, pot stills from Scotland, from Forsyth in Rothes. And uh, there with the first charcoal layer in the first cask, those faints are gone already. And if you refill or rebarrel in the next cask, then you do not he have to filter this. But you need the boundary and you need uh, the caramelized wood sugars for giving more aroma into the whiskey. So this is a, a very new, a very creative whiskey, which uh, still applies to the Bourbon Act even using two casks. A very, very dark brown color. And a full, full fruity aroma, not these uh, light citrus aromas. No, this is heavily oxidized, dark berry caramelized fruits, dried fruits, dried plums, resins, sultanins, whatever the difference between those, no, I have no idea. And then there's caramel and heavy, heavy oak, which spreads the gap to marzipan. So a very aromatic intense aroma. Officially it said there's chocolate and honey in it, but I'm not able to taste those both already. Full complex. Very lot of oak. The 43.2% ABV, not too strong, quite smooth on your tongue, but after swallowing, the yolk kicks in. Strong, spicy. No sharpness at all. No chocolate. Chocolate typically has a, a kind of bitterness delivered from the oak cast. No. The period might be might have been quite short so that those bitter uh, aromas, the tannins from the oak, hasn't made it into the whiskey. So maturing in two steps, 
uh, might bring a better result in terms of bitterness. Creamy, long, warm, sort of nuts in it. The walnuts, I'm allergic to them, uh, probably hazelnuts. Uh, but remember, these are no nuts added in this whiskey. No, it's the aroma of these nuts which appear during uh, the fermentation and are then enhanced during the distillation process. So there are no nuts in it. So if you're allergic, you might still drink this whiskey because there are no nuts in it. Fruitiness. Otherwise they would have to tell on the back of the label. They do not. Caramel. And very faint and very light vanilla. Thinking about what I've said about nuts. Are you allergic about nuts and are you drinking whiskey? Have you ever felt an allergic reaction to those aromas of nuts? Probably those aromas are the same. Produced by yeast during the fermentation process are the same uh, compounds as they are in the nuts. Can't believe that because it's, it's mostly proteins in the nuts and where shall those proteins come from? And during the distillation process, everything is hot. So the proteins are denaturated and should not act on, <clears throat> on your body. Yeah, a wonderful piece of whiskey. And what to do with the finishing casks? You can't use them a second time for finishing as the Scots do, because the bourbon act says you have to use fresh cask. So those used cask, the finishing as well as the first, have either to go uh, to Scotland for a second run there, or they may be used in the uh, American whiskey, blended whiskey industry, and in the company to which Woodford Reserve belong, uh, Brown Foreman, and they own also Jack Daniels and Early Times. Uh, there's the early times. The early times switched to uh, Kentucky to a straight bourbon roughly around 2003 or five, something around that. Um, but there's an awful lot of uh, whiskey produced in the early times distillery, so a lot of those might go also into the blended American blended whiskey industry. And there you can use those use cask a second time. Yeah. Thank you for watching. A very interesting, a very new experience in the American whiskey industry. It's a revolution. Very new for a Kentucky straight bourbon. Thank you very much for watching. There's more to come. Stay tuned and feel free to share this video with your friends. And I'm afraid those bottles might not be that widely available on the market. This is, I think it's an experiment running and uh, it depends on how good those bottles sell and uh, <laughs> how much money one can ask for uh, so that these rebarreling and or, uh, finishing for a second time uh, pays off a lot of manual work.